Hello, my name is Mike Johnson, taking you on an inside and outside video tour of this Tesla Model Y. I don't know if you noticed, but there's two of Teslas here. They're doing a light show. That's something Teslas do. But we're looking at this one. Teslas have gone overboard to try to do cool stuff. As you see, this one is doing its light show right now. Where it flashes the headlights. If you are in a Tesla club, you can all set your shows to be coordinated to go off at the same time. It's doing it right now. Flashing headlights, tail lights, playing some cool music. This one that we're looking at is a Tesla Model Y Performance, which is the top of the line Tesla Model Y. It has dual motors. It has all kinds of go fast. There's a lot of Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Porsches out there that aren't even as cl close to being as fast as this car can go. Even faster than a Dodge Viper. Very fast and powerful car. If you go in the settings and you turn on to drive like a maniac, enable. Otherwise, it it should be safe to let your wife and kids drive it if they don't play with the settings. But uh, it is a Tesla Model Y. It's definitely faster than a regular Model Y. And it's definitely much faster than the single motor Model Y. So talking about it, this is a long range, all wheel drive. So it's four by four. Tesla. So if you're going up to your cabin in Aspen, you may not have to put tire chains on. You may be able to go up there no problem. It's extremely clean inside and out. It just completed detail. This Model Y performance can be spotted in the parking lot by the red brake calipers. The regular Teslas don't get the red brake calipers. When you see one of the red calipers, that's a performance. It's extremely clean. Our source for these Teslas that we have is Tesla Motors. These were previous owned one owners. They turn them in. Here's the last three digits of the VIN number, 788. So it's a very clean car. It's a very fast car. It's a very popular car. Teslas are actually one of the most popular cars, best selling in the world. And one of the reasons is because when you buy a Tesla, they don't pack in all this junk fees. $2,500 for undercoating, $2,500 for scotch guard, $2,500 for pain protection. All those extras that they, your other car dealers charge, Tesla doesn't charge. That's one of the things that help them outsell everybody else. Now this is a pre-owned Tesla. So you buy it from someone else, not me, you may encounter that same problem. That's something we don't do. We don't add hidden charges. I'm gonna include in the listing the easy math so you can calculate your cost out the door. There's literally dealer fees is like less than $200. So price plus less than $200 and tax and licensing fees for license plates. If you're in California where we are, if you're not in California and you want it delivered to a different state, we don't even have to charge you tax and license as long as it's transported across state lines. If it's transported across state lines, including to other countries, that becomes a changing the nature of the transaction from a retail vehicle transaction to an interstate or foreign commerce transaction. So if you're exporting it, not a problem. It's kind of dark 
it's later in the day so let's open up all the doors so you can see how clean it is inside I don't have much of anything in the way to point out imperfections. This is an extremely clean car. It only has 22,000 original miles on it. Model Y performance, and we're gonna show the VIN number again on the screen. It's right there. That little banner means performance. That doesn't use the wording. It just gives you a red banner there under dual motor it's not the same as the other dual motors this one is a screaming powerful crazy fast vehicle so if you're a sane and normal driver this car is just gonna drive like a smooth and steady chill car but if somebody starts messing with you like say a volcano goes off behind you you happen to spot a tornado coming right at you you've got this crazy performance that you can tap into and hit the gas pedal which uses no gas and uh, you can go zero to 60 and almost as fast as in less than three point something seconds you you can check the specs they're extremely fast very clean car it's been detailed super clean inside hit the button here the seats fold flat you're ready for a trip to the furniture store Home Depot put your giant st. Bernard in the back this doesn't show any signs of st. Bernard being in here so far I don't see any fur in here. No pet odors. Very clean car. So there's also the front trunk area. By pushing a button on the screen, you can open the front. When Thanksgiving comes along and you have to haul that turkey and gravy and biscuits and you want somewhere to put it that's not going to mess up your carpet, you got the front trunk area where you can haul that. A lot of people forget Tesla dual motor is like having a twin engine car engine on the front engine on the rear except it doesn't use any gasoline it's electric powered it's electric vehicle so it has insane uh, potential performance if you tap into it And yeah, that's another dual motor over there, Tesla, very screaming fast. That's the Model 3. This is the Model Y. They look similar, but there's a lot more room in the Model Y. This is like the small SUV of the Teslas. It's bigger than some other SUVs. Ford Mustang Mach-E calls itself an SUV. This has more room inside than the Mach-E. Extremely clean. Let's go for a test drive. So we're going on a test drive of the Model Y dual motor long range performance. Now I'm not gonna take it to the racetrack and show you top gear behavior. For that you can watch YouTube and watch other videos of how insane these cars can B. This video is about this specific car that is for sale as of May 2024. Now right now the software is calibrating. We're going on a little test drive and then we're going to try to get it to complete calibration. If you don't drive your car for a while the computer says hey are all my cameras in alignment and it won't let you do driver assist until it's sure that everything is right it goes through self calibration you don't have to pay anybody to do it you just have to drive the car and as you drive the car 
that calibrates. Now when you're driving a Tesla, because it's such a quiet car, since it's not making noise, it's letting everybody know that you're doing something stupid if you're doing something stupid. Um, you've got your speed right here, you can pay attention to it. It's easy to do the speed limit, you just drive it safe and sane and it'll just follow the speed limit. Oh look, we just finished calibration. So in the settings, in order for automatic steering, you have to enable that on the autopilot screen. We just, at a stop, you can do that. We've enabled that. So now, notice it sees the brake lights on the car next to us. When they let off the brake, the car knows they let off the brake. So if it can see the brake lights, it'll let you know. And as cars pass by, they appear on the screen. There's a car over there. There's a car over there. There's some other cars down the road. It There's SUV passing by, and you see all that on the screen live while it happens. When the light turns green, it'll beep at you. See that? So this has the full self-driving computer on board. Now, we're trying not to get any tickets by doing anything that we shouldn't be doing. So we're not gonna Ricky race around. We'll get back on the freeway and demonstrate. The car is now following the lane lines. When you turn on a turn signal or something, it turns that back off. But the, the little wheel has finished its calibration and we have the full self-driving computer is ready. If you pay for this extra software for full self-driving, for me, I don't think it's worth it. But maybe for you or for your elderly relatives, you trust the car better to drive them from California to Arizona than you trust yourself. Those things, maybe it's good for that. Yeah, maybe grandma should have the full self-driving because she's 90 years old. Now as we get back up on the freeway, hands off, the car is accelerating to the speed limit of 65. Now the car will either accelerate to the speed limit or you can set it to the relative speed that you set it at. But right now, the car is self-driving. I'm holding the steering wheel. There's a camera up here watching to make sure you're holding on the steering wheel. If you pay the extra 200 or 199 a month for the full self-driving software, it'll let you take your hands off the steering wheel. That's hands-free driving, but this is not hands-free. The autopilot requires you to have your hand on the steering wheel. Most people feel more comfortable with that anyways. So, I'm not touching the gas pedal down there. I'm not touching the brake. The car is doing it. Now, when you're doing this, you can push the gas to go faster if the car's not going fast enough for you. But if you want to get off, like I'm going to get off, we get our side view camera. And then we get off. I'm letting off the gas. I'm not even touching the brakes. The car's slowing down by itself. That's the speed. And then the car is complaining about something. It's a driver assist, super smart cruise control. Helping you not to do something dumb and crash your nice car. If you notice, Teslas don't usually have as many dents as other cars do because that tends to keep the drivers out of trouble even when they're distracted with all their tech stuff. Looks like a new in and out going in near the dealership. You can come and get a double-double when you come and see the car. See all the cones on the screen? It sees the traffic cones. 
It's a traffic aware, smart cruise control. So now we're going to talk about charging your plug-in vehicle. On the left is a Tesla Model 3. On the right is a Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid. This one is gas plus electric. This one is electric only. So the electric plug on a Tesla is a different shape than the electric plug on other vehicles. Now some manufacturers like Ford for example and we have a Ford level 1-2 charger right here. Notice there's a plug right here. You can plug in one of the adapters into it. The same thing applies for a Tesla plug. The Tesla has a plug and you can choose the type of power for your house. So a level 1 or 2 adapter supports either 50 amp which the plugs look like this these are big or your regular plug like you might plug in a toaster in your kitchen or vacuum cleaner or something this is the Ford 50 amp and the Ford 110 now they have this safe adapters so all you do is plug this into your charger depending on the type of outlet you have so the 110 outlet, like you might plug a toaster in, these will charge between three to five miles of driving, I'm sorry, three to five miles of charging miles per hour to your battery. If you plug in the more powerful 50 amp or 40 amp 240 adapters, it'll add about 30 or sometimes more miles of driving per hour of charging alternately if you go to a supercharger here's a picture of a supercharger you can use an adapter using the adapter that has either this type of connector or this type of connector there's one for each direction you can plug in a Tesla at any other type of charger or you can plug in any other type of plug-in vehicle at a Tesla charger. They're interchangeable if you have the adapter, which let's say they cost about a hundred bucks. So this is the Ford charger. This is a really nice charger because this is the Ford level one or level two charger that uses those adapters. It'll plug into and charge other vehicles like this Chrysler. And because it's level two capable, it'll charge it faster than a level one, remember. On level two, it'll charge 30 more or less miles of driving per hour of charging. So if you leave it plugged in for 10 hours on level two, 30 times 10 is 300 miles of driving, possibly, depending on the capacity of the battery. Likewise on the Tesla, if you plug in the Tesla charger, which is over here, looks like this it looks very different but it plugs in to the tesla now they have adapters from tesla to this is called evse and there's a different version with two little prongs underneath that's dc fast charging evse but tesla supports fast charging through the same port now normally fast charging is not available at your home is only available at a supercharger. If you go to other off-brand non-Tesla chargers, you may not get a fast charge. I see a lot of complaints about the non-Tesla superchargers. Now those two chargers I've shown you so far are level one or level two. Here is a um, Toyota or Honda charger. This is a used one. It has a regular 110 outlet, so it'll charge three miles of driving per hour of charging and sometimes they'll charge up to five miles of driving per hour of charging is evse type using an adapter a regular like a toyota or honda charger to a tesla 
they plug in and they will charge a Tesla. So if you have the adapter with you, you can charge your Tesla anywhere. Likewise, if you have a different, a Toyota or a Honda or a Chrysler or one of these other types of a Ford that uses the EVSE style charger, if you have the adapter, you can go to a Tesla supercharger and charge your car there. So that's a level one. These other chargers the, the, with two adapters plugs will charge level one or level two. The, if you don't have level two in your garage, that's okay. You can charge level one. So this van is got a gasoline engine and a big hybrid battery. So if you charge it up, it'll go 20, 30 miles of electric power before it switches to gas. So you have over here, you have the Tesla, which is battery only. Now beware, some earlier battery only cars like Nissan Leaf, for example, uh, Fiat 500e, they would only go 60, 70, 80 miles on a charge. Even the Toyota RAV4 EV would only go like 90 miles on a charge. And I'm talking about the newer version, which is the 2013 model Toyota RAV4 EV wouldn't go that far it was electric only if i whip out a calculator here and i'm going to explain some quick math that'll go probably 35 miles on a charge times 365 that's 12,000 miles a year a plug-in hybrid it depends how often you plug it in on how far you can go but with a plug-in hybrid you don't have to plug it in you can drive on gas only, so you can take your long cross-country trips. As opposed to an electric vehicle, you have to plug it in. Now I'm going to explain how for best practices. Now for best practices, if you have a plug-in vehicle, you're going to get the best result if you charge it every night. Or whenever you're not driving, you know, when it's sitting in your driveway or at home or in your garage, whatever have it plugged in when you're not driving it in the case of this Tesla you have an adjustable slider here you can set your maximum rate of charge and by default Tesla shows you on the graphic here they recommend charge it up to 80% for daily use and then if you're plugging it in every night the cycles on the battery aren't going to be that much so at the current location they can charge it 32 amps but this is adjustable you can charge it more maybe less depends on the power capability where you know you're plugged into and it remembers if you live in an apartment you're going to have a different experience than if you live in a house or someplace safely where you can safely plug it in every night you're going to have the best experience if you plug it in every night even to a 110 outlet even if you don't have the 240, that's okay. Because if this car is charging at five miles of driving times, say, 12 hours a day, half the day, it's building up 60 miles of driving. Now, if you drive more miles on one day or less miles on another day, it depends on your commute. If you have a longer than 60 mile daily commute, probably by the weekends it'll catch up on your daily charging even if you only charge it on a 110 but if you have the level 2 connector in your garage or your driveway it'll charge in five hours from empty to flat typically on most of these full electric Teslas but regardless if you're charging a Tesla or plug-in hybrid you want to charge it every night for best results Let's say you live in an apartment and you're thinking about getting a Tesla and you have nowhere to plug it in. How would you handle it? For best result in that case, you should probably get the extended range version. There's, there's standard range, medium range, and extended range versions that drive a little bit farther, hold a little bit more charge in the battery. And then with that, you can run it all the way down to 10%. And by that time, this Tesla says if you run it below 20% and you go to a supercharger 
and fast charge it, it'll charge to 80% in 20 minutes, roughly. Not all char chargers are created equal. Tesla even gives a tip screen, look right here, supercharging tips. When we tap on that, find the fastest supercharger, navigate to the supercharger, arrive with 20% of the battery or less to maximize the charging rate, leave space between the cars, move your car after charging, and it's possible that water vapor could occur in cold weather because of the radiant heat. Those are the supercharging tips. Now compare that to this plug-in hybrid. This plug-in hybrid has a gasoline engine and a battery. So this one doesn't give you the same type of range anxiety that you might have with an electric car. Generally, Teslas don't give you the same kind of range anxiety that you would have had with an older electric car like a Nissan Leaf or Fiat 500e. These are longer range, full capable cars that you may not even have to take to an outside charger away from your house, not very often, unless you have an incredibly ridiculously long commute. If you do, what are you driving all over the place for? with so many people working from home. At A Buyer's Choice, we offer you clean deals without junk fees. We are a buy appointment warehouse type dealer where most of our cars are kept indoors. You can make a same or next day appointment by calling by phone. Be careful about just sending an email or text because for other dealers, you will just reduce yourself from a person to only a lead for a salesperson to pursue until you sign your future income away. Also, most dealers have hidden fees and costs that are added to the advertised sale price that you might not find out about until you are ready to sign. I prefer that you call us between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. so you can be treated like a person and we can answer your questions for you quickly and politely. So you don't get ripped off by another dealer, you should follow a few steps from this checklist that, and you can pause the video or take a screenshot of your computer screen. Here's a safety checklist so you don't get ripped off. I will, if you ask, give you a good faith estimate of your total cost out the door for any vehicle you are pursuing from our dealership because we offer clean deals. When you go to a dealership, they have to make you sign a contract for the purchase of a vehicle. Now, before you go to a dealership, you should ask for a purchase order, quoting all fees and costs. What you have to watch out for, and this is just a simple, this is a payment calculator, but this is shows cash price vehicle and accessories. You have to watch out for that. These contracts, this is a simple purchase order that we at A Buyer's Choice can send you before you even come to the dealership so you know how much your total of payment is gonna be before you even arrive. Or you can even ask for a simple contract which would identify any interest rates or anything like that. A lot of dealerships use different types of contracts. This is a simple interest con contract, a uh, simple interest finance charge contract. This is a 2006 version. Notice this is a 2022 version. Look how much longer it is. They keep adding text and lines. These contracts get longer and longer. It's about 24 inches long. If you're given a long contract, that's fine. But where you really have to pay attention to is total cash price includes line one cash price vehicle cash price accessories a lot of dealers are adding eight thousand dollars in accessories from undercoating to scotch guard all types of uh, security devices that aren't even the factory alarm system that may not be of any value to you but they add eight thousand dollars or more in accessories added to the cash price. So when you look at the advertised price, which is the price of the vehicle, you think you're getting a good deal. But when you're sitting at the desk, you're paying all this extra stuff. And look how many lines there are 
of stuff to add on and two columns to add on and then you have places all over the place to sign now these long form contracts are also printed on both sides so if you're going to take your time to read this i can tell you if you go to a dealership and you they fill out this contract for you they're not going to let you take it home and read it and they're going to be like this is the deal here and now at a buyer's choice we're a little different we'll give you your con your purchase order quoting you out the door before you even come and visit the dealership saving you a lot of time these other dealerships you're going to sit in there for eight hours haggling right here it says total cash price a through o might appear all the way down here and then there's license fees registration fees tire fees those things can be added on total official fees emissions it keeps adding up so a lot of people end up at the dealership they look at a twenty thousand dollar car and before they're ready to leave it's actually sixty thousand dollars total of payments and they're tired they sign because they don't want to go home empty-handed after they've already invested an entire weekend and then they feel bad the next day what the hell did i just happen to me and they'll buy a, they won't buy another car for 10 years because it's going to take them 10 years to get over it now if we send you a purchase order like this one this is all your credit union is going to need if you've applied and approved at a credit union for an auto loan they can originate the loan with just this document which we can email to you or you can come in person and pick it up the credit union will issue a loan to pay for the vehicle you're buying from us this is a clean deal it doesn't have a lot of junk fees added on um, this is only one example yours would be specific and it would include the VIN number of the vehicle you're buying and the odometer readings and stuff like that but basically you want to ask for a purchase order before you visit a dealership so you don't get railroaded and end up, end up paying three times what you thought you were going to pay. You're going to be able to get the best car at the lowest payment and you're probably going to know what your payments are going to be before you even start looking at cars. There's credit unions, banks, and finance companies and if you go fill out a credit application at a dealership, you might be put with a finance company which is almost like a loan shark not exactly but the interest rates are much higher so you'll be stuck paying your payments for a lot longer for a lot less car so we want you to do some steps first before you head to the auto mall also when you show your face at the car dealership and you signing loan agreements with the dealer and you're signing sales contracts or purchase contracts you have to be careful there are different kinds of contracts the one you want to be signing is a simple interest or generic basic sale contract uh, what you have to watch out for are pre-computer interest rates there are auto loans that are interest first auto loans so if you sign your loan and think you're going to refinance but you signed a pre-computed interest first loan that means you may not be able to uh reduce the amount of interest you're paying so you definitely want to make sure you sign a simple interest rate contract at the dealership when you buy your car now if you buy it from us you don't have to worry so go to my website mybestcar.com and on youtube it's spelled the same the website is mybestcar.com and on the website you can view all inventory you can view our youtube channel uh 20 years of feedback uh, reports lender direct financing vehicles on true car even eBay auctions uh, it will go here to cars.com listings this is maybe where you want to go and you can select the vehicle you might be interested in check the price what is the price on the website click on it uh, see how the price compares to other vehicles and we're going to talk more about that in a minute um, look at the Carfax report and then as you uh, browse around on the internet here on the website, you can see vehicles also in TrueCar. And there's a comparative analysis 
of prices of how our prices compare with average keep in mind a lot of the vehicles we sell are above average condition have more than average options maybe top of the line fully loaded have navigation systems dvd entertainment systems and also assorted features that are above average and that can make them a little bit more expensive because they have more bang for the buck we also sell rvs and if you want to see what we've been up to you can just select view all vehicles and sort by body type suvs in this case rvs and campers and we're going through we have five pages of rvs on here and notice next to the price if, if we don't have it in stock it says sold but the pictures are still viewable on the website too uh, for financing we have lender direct referrals we specifically recommend credit unions like here's some of the better ones westcom is good suntrust is good suntrust is a neat one where they don't even necessarily need title to the vehicle they'll just put the money in your checking account and then you can pay for the vehicle that way uh, but there's other ways you can browse around uh, look at the feedback here so who are we you can go back and look at 20 years of uh, since we've been a member since 2001 so that's more than 20 years of uh, reviews 100% positive feedback likewise on YouTube you can go on our YouTube channel look at our different videos and if you select to view videos and then you can select the latest popular or oldest here's oldest and that's videos from 14 years ago still up on YouTube so unlike maybe other dealers that change management every five years we've been around for a long time 25 years so with 25 years in business we know how to ship vehicles sometimes we ship them to us sometimes we ship them to you if you're sitting in the middle of some state even Hawaii or some other country we offer local delivery international delivery that's a flat rack with an RV on it a flat rack is how you load a container ship with a motorhome of course you can put it on the roll on roll off ships we've done enclosed shipping of vehicles if you need an estimate for shipping your vehicle just call us between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. and we'll give you a good faith estimate about how much it's going to cost to ship the vehicle from us to you now if you're in the middle of nowhere and you need to finance your vehicle if you're not in California just go on Google Maps search for credit unions find your area and search nearby for credit unions I'm doing it here for my area in Ontario California area and what do you know lots of credit unions are nearby as you see on the screen here we found Arrowhead Credit Union is one of the ones that popped up. I like Arrowhead Credit Union. I used to be a member. Um, they have very good interest rates. So if I open up their website and go directly to Arrowhead Credit Union, of course, you can go through your own credit union and check rates, see what they are. Here we go. 4.4% interest rate on an auto loan. You can get on their website and search for rates see what loans rates are for autos rvs whatever you're buying and sometimes they even estimate what your payments will be here look 4.49 to 23 this credit union offers tiered interest rates so if your credit is healthy you'll get a good interest rate a really good one but if your health of your credit is less desirable they might still be able to finance you uh because they offer a higher rate if your credit is higher risk but still that's going to be cheaper than going with a finance company here's another credit union altura credit union they also have excellent rates and they've treated our customers really well when they work with arrowhead but they're not the only credit unions i showed you earlier how to go on my website and search for recommended lenders but this is how to find it in your area so if you're sitting in the middle of Texas or anywhere else in the country, search for credit unions in the same way. Find one that you like near you and check what their rates are. Get pre-approved and we'll give you a purchase order so you can pay for the vehicle through your credit union financing. Now let's talk about the government programs. This one you want to go, if you're in California, go to driveclean.com.
.ca.gov, like I'm showing you who are on the internet, you go on the California State official website. Then you're going to search for incentives on the navigation bar on the top. And then you have a chance to enter your zip code. That's mine. Enter yours. Select used vehicle type. And then plug-in hybrid. Let's do plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrid and electric will get the same incentives. And then also check the box income-based incentives. So you can see all the money. Look at the top right. $25,500 in potential incentives available. That's federal tax credit. $25,500. See right there? You've got power company rebates. You've got the replace your ride program offered by South Coast Air Quality District. You've got all kinds of money. And we work with these programs. to. So when you look at the price of the car, you can get money back as rebates, especially if it's a plug-in electrified vehicle. This is how you check. If, you're, if there's no plug-in electrification, you might not get any, but you can still check on the driveclean.ca.gov website. This is where you go. So now we're going to go on the DMV website and calculate how much your registration fees are going to cost and taxes. You can get a good idea. Go to DMV, go and calculate fees. And the easiest way when you're looking for vehicles is fees for a new vehicle. Even if it's used, use fees for a new vehicle to get you close. Then you can select the model year, the fuel type. Is it gas? Is it electric? Is it a plug-in hybrid? Uh, what is the purchase price you're paying? Let's say 20000 or whatever it is. Uh, enter a date in the future, not too far away. Uh, and then uh, select the year. You have to type it in. This is a California government website, the DMV website. Select your county. Select your zip code. I'm putting mine, but you should be putting your zip code because when the fees are calculated, they're based on the address you provide. We're going to talk about that a little bit more as we get along here. That's my zip code. Now, once the model year, so let's say it's a 2020, and we calculate the fees. So, sales tax on a $20,000 vehicle for my zip code is right there, and the registration fee calculation is right there. But if you enter your price of any car that you're considering buying and your information the DMV's site will kind of calculate it now sales tax the DMV site messes up sometimes so I recommend go to the CDTFA website click on tax and fee rates in sales and use tax rates because every time you have an election the voters that live in your neighborhood choose yes or no on taxes so the taxes all over the state of california and everywhere else are very different so you can find out what your tax rate is because it's based on the address you're going to provide where the vehicle will be kept so let's say for if you're in kern county they have as low as 7.25 percent that's the lowest tax rate in the state of california but what if you're in say el monte and El Monte has 10%, but some of LA County has 10.5% tax rate. Um, so you have to see what your tax rate is based on your city or your county to calculate your out-the-door fees. And as a dealer, if we're going to calculate it, we need to know your address to run the numbers like I'm showing you here to find out what you're going to have to pay. It's up to the between you and the state of California and your elections that you participate or don't participate in how you decide what your tax rate is going to be. I'm entering in my address. And then this is find a sales tax rate by address portion of their CDTFA website. And it actually shows a little map of the city and shows this whole city is 7.75%. And it can do that for anywhere in the state of California on the state of California CDTFA website. Now, modern vehicles are built by robots, robot welders, weld the bodies together and stamp out the parts. As you see here in the video, most of the vehicles that you would possibly buy are built in a similar way, using robots to do all the welding and precision uh, 
mechanical uh, construction of the body. Now this is a unibody you're looking at. A unibody is it stands for a unitized body. It's the body structure. Once it comes out of the factory, anytime you do any damage to this portion of the car, then that's considered structural damage. Any bit of this, if you hit a post, you drill a hole, anything that's damaging this part of the body is considered structural damage. As opposed to a body on frame construction could be a frame damage because it looks like a ladder. A ladder frame, if it's damaged, that's frame damage. So we try to get cars that have not been any kind of serious or major accident of any sort. A little bit of scratch, a little bit of dent is almost inevitable. That's fine, but we don't sell major accident cars. We don't sell salvage title cars. We don't want to mess with that. Um, the ladder construction or the unibody construction cars, we try to sell grade A condition vehicles in excellent shape. It's possible there could be a little bit of body work, so ask us on a case-by-case -case basis with each vehicle. We can check and see if we're aware of any body work. Also, the Carfax sometimes gives a clue, but the Carfax can throw you off, making you think it's worse than it actually is. Um, so talk to us and get clarification if you have any concerns about any accident. Now, if your vehicle is delivered by a transport or the dealership across state lines out of California to a place other than California and first use by you occurs outside the state of California, then the transaction may be exempt from California tax. Special conditions apply and that has to be documented.